Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fragrant Bunker. Chanel fragrance price increase. <sighs> 2024. So um, it's not just their perfumes, but the entire beauty range. It's so obviously their makeup, their skincare, and their fragrances. But since this is a perfume channel, uh, we're not going to talk about the uh, the skincare and the makeup. We're just going to focus on their fragrances. You know, I love my Chanel perfumes. So every Chanel price increase when it comes to their fragrances is tragic because it's not like they do a $5 price increase. When Chanel does a price increase, they do a price increase. So let's get to it with all the deets and my thoughts on where this is all heading towards. What's the end game here? First, subscribe to my channel. If you haven't already, push the join button next to the subscription button. Become a member today. Gain access to extra perks. You can also join me on Patreon. Super Dacob all spelled together there as well for extra perks. This video is being filmed live in front of a live virtual audience. I live stream several times a week on my main Super Dacob YouTube channel. Come join me there for the live chats. Hi to my co chat tours. So, February 5th, 2024 was the price increase in the United States of America uh, for Chanel Beauty, including their fragrances. A couple of weeks prior to the U.S. price increase was the European Chanel Beauty price increase, including perfumes. So, just a couple of days before the American price increase, I keep, you know, looking at all the prices. I go to Chanel Europe, all different ones, like France mostly, Italy, Spain. I've noticed that Spain increases their prices a day after the rest or two days after the rest of Europe. I don't know why that sometimes happens. So, if you are in Europe, but you need a, you need a Spanish address if you want to get the perfume still at a cheaper... This has happened last year for the price increase. Um, very fascinating. All the other European countries increased the price. Spain took two days longer to increase theirs. Then I go to the UK website. I check the prices. US, Australia. Like, I keep scavenging. Okay. So I notice, first, the jump happened in Europe. And... Interesting to note for this price increase, by the way, everything I say in this video is for entertainment purposes only, not rooted in truths or facts. Everything's alleged and just my opinion. I've noticed that, uh, thumb up the video and subscribe. I've noticed that Chanel's prices for their mass release perfumes are much more similar uh, between Europe and America than their Les Exclusives fragrances. Very, very bizarre. Why is that? I don't know. But so if we're like to talk about Coco Noir, the Eau de Parfum, like the price between Europe and America is almost the same, give or take a couple of bucks, because, you know, depending on which state you're in in America, you got to add... You got to add the state sales tax on top, um, and that can vary from anything between no tax at all to like 9, 10%. But so uh, their price is around about like $160 now for 100 mil Eau de Parfum. And that's kind of more or less the same between Europe and America. We're really talking a couple of dollars difference. So that's kind of cool. That Chanel that has been, you know, Chanel has been telling us since years now, we're trying to harmonize prices. We want to harmonize prices so that the prices are more or less the same worldwide. Sure. Are they, though? Are they, though? Are they really, though? Because, and I've noticed also for their, <coughs> pardon me, I'm still recovering from the cold, from a flu, actually. So I'll be coughing from time to time. But I've noticed that they are, um, they're, they're, Fashion department, clothes, costume, jewelry, prices are quite more or less balanced out between Europe and America. Not their sunglasses. Oh, their sunglasses have a terrible difference in price. Hundred, two hundred, three hundred dollars difference sometimes between Europe and America. Terrible. I would never recommend buying eye Chanel eyewear in in the states from the Chanel website or from the Chanel boutiques. It, 
it's it's preposterous that the price of I don't know why they're they're doing that. Same applies to the Les Exclusives perfumes. In all three variations that we can find today. The Les Exclusives that come in uh 200, this one here, 200. 200 mil, 75 mil, and 15 mil. 200 mil and 75 mil are eau de parfum. And then we have the extra, which is 15 mil. <coughs> Pardon me. So now, <clears throat> here's where things get really sad. The price discrepancy between Europe and America is... It makes no sense. Why are you doing this, Chanel? Why are your mass release perfumes, and we're talking, you know, mass, you know, Chanel Number no. Five, Chance, uh, Gabrielle. Why are these literally, give or take a penny or a dollar, the same price between America and Europe, and yet you decided with your Les Exclusives to do a ginormous markup? So what are we talking about here? Let's start with, with the smallest one. Weakest concentration and smallest bottle, let's just put it that way, because technically this would be the smallest one, but this is the parfum, so it costs more per milliliter. But let's start with the 75 mil, okay, 75 mil Eau de Parfum Les Exclusives. Now, as of now, we have 18 of them. The new one is coming out any day now, but, you know, they all cost the same at this. Oh, by the way, <laughs> even Eau de Cologne has now been upped in price. Usually, Eau de Cologne used to cost a little bit less than the other concentrations, not anymore. Chanel is like, ah, F it. Let's make the Eau de Cologne cost the same as the Eau de Parfum. You know, who cares? Girl, really? Okay, so anyway, all of their Les Exclusives 75 mil used to cost, before the price increase, $300 plus tax. Okay. So if you're looking at around about a 10% state uh, sales tax, you're going to add another $30 on top. Okay. Worst case scenario. So worst case scenario, this baby is going to cost you $330 if you, you know, after tax between 320 and 330 after tax. Before the price increase in Europe, 75 mil eau de parfum les exclusives used to cost 215 euro. That's including tax. That's almost a hundred dollars difference. Actually, it is after tax. It's a hundred dollar difference. Okay. That's insane. Why? Why would they do this discrepancy with the Les Exclusives, but they but they would not have a discrepancy with their mass release perfumes? Now for the price increase. So this little beauty here, 75 mil, went up in price from $300 on the 5th of February, it went up to $325. Plus tax. So that would be around about what, 350? So now we're talking 350 bucks for 75 milliliter. You guys, this is small. No words. 200 mil. I do love them though. So 200 mil Eau de Parfum Chanel is exclusives in America on the 5th of February went up from $450, that's before tax, Chanel is like, you know what, let's round it up. It went up to $500. Plus tax, I mean, you're probably going to end up paying $550, $530 to $550 after the tax. $500. They marked it up 50 bucks overnight. 200 mil is $500.
in Europe, 200 mil before the price increase was 380 euro. Now it went up to 405 euro. That's a hundred dollars difference to the to the U.S. price. That's insane. That's insane. It's not like it costs Chanel more to import Les Exclusives as opposed to their mass-released perfumes. Their perfumes, they have the same luxury tax on them, whether they be the mass-released Chanel perfume or the Les Exclusives Chanel perfume. It makes no sense. They just decided that they want to charge more for this. What's the end game here, Chanel? You, you don't want to sell your perfumes. 405 euro, that's including tax in Europe, is also preposterous, but we'll go, we'll go. I mean, if you, if you really want to have the big bottle, these used to cost 200 75 285 euro when they first came out as eau de parfums okay the first release of the eau de toilettes that are no longer in production but the first release ever of the eau de toilettes of 200 mil were around about 190 euro 200 dollars they used to cost 107 175 dollars and then they jumped really fast to 200 dollars now they're that was the eau de toilettes they don't exist anymore now it's $500. Like Chanel, come on. You, re you don't want to sell your perfumes. I really don't understand why they are doing this. Because $500, I mean, and you could say, well, it's a big bottle, get the small bottle. Okay, fine. For uh, $325, so $350 after tax. $350 after tax? These used to cost 130 bucks in the eau de toilette back in the day. We've more than doubled in price. The extra 15 mil parfum went up uh, in, in America from uh, $280 to $305. So this little baby here almost costs the same as this one. So $305 plus tax. So we're looking at around about $320 to $330 for this after tax. I remember back in 2009, I bought Chanel number no. 22, the extra. I still have the empty bottle here because I, you know, I, 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 uh, I, I poured it into a sprayer so I can travel with it easier. I got this one for $140 at the Chanel Boutique. $140 at the Chanel Boutique. Now we're talking $305. It's more than doubled in price. It's more than doubled in price. In Europe, these used to cost €240. Euro. Now they went up to €280. Euro. They used to cost 130, 100 back in 2009, 130, 135 euro. Now they're 280. Again, also more than doubled in price. And here is the point that I'm trying to make. Thumb up the video, but the point is also. What's the end game? Chanel has price increases every year. Usually the price increase for their beauty products hits January, February, or latest beginning of March. And we've seen the tendency where incremental prices, they had a huge price jump last year in Europe. Uh, so this year in Europe, you know, this went up from 380 euro to 405. That is 25 euro markup. Uh, last year, 
uh, the price jumped really high. They used to cost, last year, they cost 330 euro. They jumped to 380 overnight. So there was a 50 euro price increase. This year, uh, they got a 25 euro price increase. So it was half the amount of a price increase that they had last year. Last year, they really pushed it. And I do believe that their sales stopped a little bit. That's why this year they didn't up the price so dramatically again. Just my opinion. But in America, they keep jumping $50, $70 incrementally, the dealers exclusives in particular. So what's the end game here? Why are they doing this? There could be several reasons to this. I believe that one of the reasons, <laughs> one of the reasons is that the Les Exclusives distribution is more limited than their mass-released perfumes. In order to be allowed to sell their mass-released perfumes, you need uh, to be licensed by Chanel to sell their perfumes. And then you can sell the perfumes that are not exclusive to their own boutiques. Les Exclusives is exclusive to their boutiques and their standalone little uh, corner shops, uh, corner boutiques within the malls or bigger department stores. Chanel, since years, has been moving towards becoming completely independent when it comes to their own distribution. This is why back in 2013-14, they started opening their own beauty boutiques. They started opening their own beauty boutiques, and they keep opening new ones every year because ultimately, and they're expanding their online sale for their perfumes. And if you notice, from year to year, more and more of the products have a little tag next to them on the website that says exclusive, exclusive, exclusive to the website, exclusive to Chanel. You can't find it with any agreed licensee, whatever, only with Chanel. The more time passes and the more their product becomes ex exclusive to themselves. Basically what they're doing is they're cutting out the middleman. They're cutting out the middleman. They are distributing to themselves, <clears throat> maximizing profits completely because the middleman the managers, distributors, they're not there anymore. Chanel just sells to their own boutiques, at least when it comes to their less exclusives fragrances. In order to do that, you have to produce less because the distribution is much smaller, which means that the quantity you're manufacturing of this product is much lower than, let's say, Chans. Okay, you're going to produce a ton of these and distribute them worldwide. You're not going to produce a ton of these. Now, I think Chanel has also got stuck in this vortex of constant price increases. It's not like they can now stop because probably the higher ups think it's going to ruin their reputation, allegedly, because like, oh, well, we, we can't now, we can't stop now. The ball is rolling. What are people going to think that, that, that uh, we're failing? So I think in a way they're stuck in this rut of, on one end, they're producing less quantities of these because they are tight in distribution. They only sell it through their own channels. They're selling less the more the price goes up. And yet they still keep producing the entire range. Unlike other brands, Chanel did not discontinue any Les Exclusives perfume since they first came out. And this is something commendable. Because if you look at Louis Vuitton, since they started producing their Les Exclusives fragrances, a ton of them have been discontinued since 2016. And they've introduced them only in 2016. Okay. Chanel's Les Exclusives have been going on. Well, minus the original four, Gardenia, number 22, Cuir de Russie, Bois des Îles. Uh, the other Les Exclusives, right, were introduced back in 2006 slash 2007. So they've had 10 years before Louis Vuitton. They've had 10 years head start before Louis Vuitton decided to, to, to introduce their own Les Exclusives versions. And yet, since 2016, Louis Vuitton has discontinued a bunch of their exclusive perfumes. Chanel has not discontinued one single perfume. Also, Chanel does not release 
20 new perfumes like Louis Vuitton does every year. So they take themselves more seriously. I think Louis Vuitton is making a mistake by releasing so many, but it's a whole different marketing strategy. I mean, it is LVMH after all. All they want is money. Chanel does care for the quality of their perfumes still. And they are amazing. They produce smaller quantities of them. There's almost no profit there. This is what I think is happening, uh, at least with their Les Exclusives. I think that these perfumes are produced in such small quantities because they're not selling that much. They call them back after a couple of years because, you know, cosmetics and perfumes, they have a shell, shelf life that is limited, also by law. Uh, so they call them back. And, uh, well, what they do with them after they call them back, uh, I don't want to even say. I don't even want to say it would make me cry. So there's a lot of waste. And the more time passes, the more it costs them to make these. Why? Because they sell less. So now the clients like myself, who still keeps buying Chanel, I'm very well aware of the fact that when I buy a Les Exclusives perfume, when I buy one, it's like I bought two. It's like I'm buying one for the person that can't buy it anymore. So Chanel is charging me for two to keep being able to produce them. And they're still not really working at a profit. Every time I, I talk to my, well, they're not working at a profit with the Les Exclusives, not with the mass releases. Okay. And this is according to my sales associate my Chanel sales associate who keeps telling me, Jacob, every time we have a briefing, they tell us we don't make money with these. These are sold. They're made, they're there for looks. They're, they're there for prestige. They're there for, to, to, to say we care. This is an important product for us. It is our, you know, high end and high end product. It's there for our image. So those profits, they keep telling their own staff, we're not working at a, we're not maximizing our profits with these. This is why I believe they have to up the prices of these much more than they do for their mass releases. In a way, I believe them um, that their mass releases are carrying also the cost for these. These are really special. Like when you buy this one, um, you're getting something really special. You, all Chanel perfumes are special, but you are getting something special. Now, does it hurt that the prices are so high? It totally does. Is this thing worth $500? <sighs> such a difficult question. Um, I mean, $500 is a lot or, or in a smaller format, is it worth 300? Uh, is it worth $350 after tax? No, but also yes. Do I wish they cost only 150 bucks? Hell yeah. Is it sustainable for them? I get it. It's probably not sustainable for them. If they were to make them cost 150, they would then probably have to stop making half of them. The ones that are not selling that well. And here we get to another point. I do believe that, you know, uh, some of the Les Exclusives perfumes sell better than others. And you can see, it's easy to see with Chanel which ones are the best sellers and which are not. The ones that they have samples of are the best sellers little miniature bottles that they give you for free if you buy one, you know. They don't make them of all of them. You can buy the, the set, but you, you pay for that one. I'm talking about the ones that they, actually, that they actually give you for free, the four milliliter splash luxury samples. They only make them now of for their best sellers. Sycamore, Beige, Coromandel, for every new release. So when they released Le Lion de Chanel, they had them for a certain period of time. Now they don't do Le Lion de Chanel anymore because it's not a bestseller. But they have Gardenia, Sycamore, Coromandel. Uh, Gardenia, Sycamore, Coromandel. Number 22 from time to time. 
um, beige. Those are the five. You're never going to see Cuir de Russie as a four mil anymore. They did them back in the day when they did Eau de Toilettes, but not as Eau de Parfum, unless you don't buy the set of all of them. Um, you're not going to see Bois des Îles as a four milliliter splash sample, you know, Misia, not anymore. Um, Eau de Cologne, forget about I've never seen an Eau de Cologne in a four mil individual slide box. Um, 1957, they did it when it was new, not anymore, boy, you can't find it anymore in a four mil. They did when it was new again, but uh, when it was launched, Jersey, I haven't seen it in ages. 1932, Eau de Parfum, four mil, haven't seen it in ages. 31, Rue Cambon, forget about it. So this is how you know which ones are their best sellers, because they have four milliliter samples of them. I have been told by my sales associate that this year they're going to bring back all of the samples in spray form, 1.5 mil of the entire range. Again, thank God for that, at least. We're paying for something, right? At least bring back the samples, not the four mil, the 1.5 spray mils. But see what I'm saying here? If they were to still sell these at a lower price, it's not like a ton more people would be buying them, but then they would have to cut. They're like, okay, well then we can only keep alive half of them. We're going to stop producing the ones that are not best sellers. By upping the price, I do believe that they warrant still production of the lesser no number 18, Bel Respiro, La Pausa. Those are very, very, very niche even for Chanel standards. So in order for people like me who adore Bel Respiro, who adore La Pausa, who adore number 18, in order for me to still be able to find it in Chanel uh, shops, I have to uh, spend more <laughs> because otherwise they wouldn't be produced anymore. Now, like I said, this is a conversation that is a little bit difficult because we don't know the true numbers, Chanel's true numbers. But usually when it comes to these big corporations, you guys, the numbers are in the quantity. You need to manufacture enormous amounts of product to warrant profits, real profits. The second you start producing something in smaller quantities, it's there's less and less and less profit to be made there. So I, I see here Mahora saying in the chats, like, yeah, but the juice costs three to six uh, euro max. <clears throat> it only costs three to six euro max if you produce a humongous amount. But if you don't, if you reduce the quantity produced, your cost for production grows. And Chanel has been on this mission since years now to produce less. They are producing less. Even within their collections, I see it in my fashion boutique. Uh, yes, they still do their 10 collections a year, which is preposterous. But within those collections, the boutiques order less. The SKUs are smaller. There's way less to order. And there's a tighter distribution. When Carl was alive and they had sales uh, of their fashion, there was a ton of stuff on sale. Now there's barely anything. Everything is reduced. And they're, they're trying to, this is my what I think is happening. They're reining their distribution back to themselves. They want to one day, I think the end game is, to become completely self-distributed and only to sell through their own boutiques and channels. So you can imagine what that means. That means that it's going to become even more limited. And when it becomes even more limited, it becomes more exclusive, more covetable, but also more expensive. Why? Because you're producing less. Automatically, the price rises. Now, the question is, is the quality going to remain really good? For now, Les Exclusives Chanel uh, perfume quality is top-notch. I adore their perfumes. I think they're amazing. 
if they keep the quality as is, um, I'm in it for the ride for now. Uh, if they start diminishing the quality, then we're going to have to stop buying their stuff. I will at least. Now, having said that, what's the end game here? Prices are going to keep going up. I'm sorry to have to tell you this, but next year... Expect the 200 mils to go up to four to 550 or 580 dollars a bottle. Expect the 75 mil to go up to 400 dollars next year, and expect the extras to go up from 305 dollars to around about 360 dollars to 350 dollars. So, and then the year after that, even higher, and the year after that, even higher still. So, this is why I'm saying we can sit here and you know be upset about this and say i'm done with chanel yeah we can but at the same time their perfumes for me personally are the best out there quality wise and composition wise so i'm gonna keep buying for how long i don't know i'll be buying less I'll be buying less, but I'll still be buying. What are your thoughts? Are you going to be buying more or less? So Ollie says, I really want some juice now. <laughs> Gloria says, it's too much for me. I got to look elsewhere. Tina says, also the inflation. Mahora says, it's over. Chanel is for the rich only. Uh, Jolie says, searching for other scents now. Um, Finley says, it's insane. Ah, and Finley also says, well, gotta make what I have last. And Mahora says, yes, they are pulling out of drugstores and smaller perfume shops. They totally are, you guys. They totally are. So, you know, it's sad that it's getting to a point where the prices are so exorbitant that but they have these beautiful 18 perfumes, soon to be 19, soon to be 20. And you're going to have to cherry pick. You know, you're going to have to be like, okay, I can afford one a year. I can't buy three anymore. I can only buy one. And you collect the money the whole year and then you get that one and you treasure it more, I guess. Maybe we're also going back to a time when, you know, in the 70s and in the 80s, I had this conversation with somebody a while ago. <clears throat> And they were saying it was a huge event back in the day when a new perfume was launched. Perfumes cost much more than they do today. Depends which perfume we're talking about. But when back in the 80s and the 70s, a new perfume was launched, people would save up money to buy that one perfume. Now it's like there's a perfume being launched every week and people are buying every week a perfume here and there. Not everybody is, but <clears throat> it's almost as if we're going back to the time where we're anticipating a new launch. When a new launch happens, you save up the money, you're waiting for the new launch. If you love the perfume, you buy it, and then you stick with that expensive perfume for a whole year or something. You'll, you also still have the perfumes you bought the years prior, but it's going to be less consumerism. Is that that bad? Ultimately, I don't think that's that bad to consume less. Um, I've been much more focused on really really enjoying the perfumes that i have in the past year and and purchasing extremely limited amounts of new perfumes I, my channel is not the type of channel you're going to come to to watch a new perfume review 10 times a week that's not me i have to fall in love with a perfume you know then i buy a perfume then i live with it for some time and then i'm ready to do a review and sometimes it takes me years to review a perfume sometimes i can review it quickly sometimes i get a sample and I'm never going to buy it because I don't think it, you know, and I can review it for the fun of it. I can also do a review of a sample. I've done before. Louis Vuitton. I love doing Louis Vuitton sample reviews. Because, but yeah, we'll go, we'll go. But when I buy a perfume, I have to really love a perfume. I'm very, very, very uh, cautious with my perfume purchases, not just because of the money spending, but to be perfectly honest with you, also because like I have a lot of perfumes already. Do I want to add more, more, more? I want to add only when I'm sure that what I'm adding is, is a love, is a true love. In that respect, I think Chanel is okay because, well, think about it. It's not like they release 10 new Liz exclusives every year. 
they release a new list exclusives every three years, every two years, every four years, depending, you know. So uh, Le Lion de Chanel was released in what, 2020, 2021? Now it's 2024. So it's been like three years before they were going to release the new list exclusives. So technically, one could also think this way. I could have bought Le Lion back in 2001, uh, 2021 and then started saving up money for the next release. I would have had three years time to save up for the new release. Yes, in those three years, I would have bought almost no other perfume because I've been saving up money to buy it. But if, if my focus is Chanel and I love their perfumes, you see what I mean? It's not like they're messing with us and they're releasing two Liz exclusives every three months. And then you're like, oh my God, I'm a collector. How am I going to keep up with this? I can't spend $1,500 every two months on perfumes. So in that respect, I do believe that one new fragrance release every three years. And if I love how it smells, I it's doable. I'm speaking for myself. It's doable for me. So as long as they keep it like that, very modest release, time-wise, I'm good. If they start dropping Les Exclusives perfumes five times a year for $500 a bottle, no. Then I'm also going to say no. We're done here. But they're keeping it very slow and elegant. And I'm like, okay, we can play this game still, even though it's getting really hard. So those are my thoughts. There was a lot to say here because this price increase really triggered a lot of these thoughts in me. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. What do you think their end game is? And will you still keep buying Chanel perfumes? Yes or no? Subscribe, thumb up the video. And until next time, never forget to never give up on love. Love you loads. Take care. Bye. Mwah.